Welcome to the Web Series Show. On today's episode, we're going to meet the creator of the web series Saving Rent. Now, when I came across his series online, I was really impressed with the high production value, the acting, and the writing was very well done. I thought to myself, this is something that you could really see on network television. So let's take a look at some clips, and then we'll meet the creator of Saving Rent. My name is Mike, and I'm a project manager. But if you ask me exactly what I do, I couldn't really tell you. For the past six months, I've been leaving my home that I share with my girlfriend, Kelly, and doing absolutely nothing. I don't want to worry Kelly, so instead of telling my girlfriend the truth, I just thought I would find another job quickly and it would be okay. Well, the days turned into weeks, the weeks into months, and to me running out of savings. When I finally realized that we may lose our home, I manned up and told Kelly. Well, actually, I lied to her and made up some baloney story about interest rates. You know, you start to hear all about this web stuff, all these uh, high-end content that's coming up for the web, and I eventually knew that web and TV was going to become one eventually, uh, not then. And I kind of just told myself, let's let's try it out. Uh, I mean, I've done shorts before and films, and I worked in television, uh, but I didn't really know anything about the web or creating content for the web. And I got together with a couple of people, and we decided to put the show together. You can see maybe just to get our feet wet. Mm -hmm. So when the time comes when, you know, web TV is popular, I'll have something to show. The show itself, uh, again, we didn't have a, a huge budget uh, for the show and creating stuff uh, without guns and blowing up or, you know, constructing things on a very low budget. You have to come up with an idea that, you know, is relatable and it works and that has worked before in just the standard TV format. And, you know, I, I like the 80s style comedy very much, so we kind of thought, you know, let's stick in that realm. Uh, and, I mean, everybody, especially in LA, has, has, has a roommate mm -hmm. story. And I have, and I was living with an awful roommate <laughs> back then. So we kind of just said, you know, how about like a roommate story and putting, uh, you know, a bunch of different people in a small environment and see how they react. And plus 2008, that's when the whole economy thing happened. And, it kind of made sense, you know, people moving in together, save rent, kooky characters in a house. And we sat down and wrote a story. There was a couple of big challenges and small challenges. I mean, when you're doing anything low budget, just to keep the whole production going, keeping everybody happy and everything smoothly, it, it's hard on its own. Some of the main challenges we had, especially on a schedule, because we had to break it up into 17 days, we couldn't have a flow of production because people had to go off and to get real jobs, you know? That's, that's a problem. I mean, one of my actors got in a bar fight the night before, couldn't show up uh, on set. Uh, my DP had an emergency work thing. Uh, he had to take off, and then he brought in another DP, a friend of his, and the friend got arrested on the way to the set. Uh, he had some kind of warrant on him and the car and the equipment got impounded. So we lost three days of shooting at the reschedule a month later uh, and we shoot it like that. That's some of the problems, uh, the big ones. Smaller ones were more like, you know, we had a hard drive and we were shooting so much footage and pretty much we couldn't put enough of the footage on that hard drive. So media management wise, we had to get two different hard drives and move stuff over from an editor. He has to work off two different hard drives. Those are the minor problems, you know, but you run into a lot of different things working on anything indie. For, for the guys who are just starting out uh, right now, just sort of uh, who don't have experience in just general production uh, of content, uh, I would say just, just practice and shoot as much footage as you can and learn. Um, Learn your craft and uh, learn how to do it properly. Sometimes people just want to shoot stuff, uh, just put it on YouTube, and it's and it's great. That's part of it, you know. For independent producers who are starting out, who are new, they should do that. Just find your voice, learn the craft, and do as much as you can, because uh, you will get better eventually. Uh, for the people who have experience in production, whether it's short films, TV, and they're just sort of entering uh, the web world. Uh, do your research, do a lot of pre-production, you know, come up with a marketing plan, come up with a list of distributors you, you know, you want to talk to, um, come up with a nice budget, come up, you know, pretty much just pre-produce something that is, is, you can sell. Mm -hmm. 
So how about package it, you know, I don't want to sound like Hollywood, but you need to have a package ready before you've been shooting your show and talk to all distributors of what, what, what they want, what kind of shows they're looking for, what kind of genres they're looking for, and then just take it from there. We kind of went back to like the 80s or the 70s because TV right now, it's not really like it used to be. We it was an 80s style sitcom. When people ask me, I'm trying to explain the show, but the roommates, it's, it's, it's an 80s style sitcom. And if you watch television in the 80s, you kind of know, you know, the, the cool beginning of the, of the song and, you know, like a format. Yes. And uh, I think uh, the, the content is very relatable to when we shot in 2008, 2009, and to even now, the Ruby situation. We have a lot of kooky characters, uh, you know, from a porn star to an, an, an illegal living together to just uh, regular folks kind of living together, trying to manage, uh, you know, a, a house. And the acting was great, and, and, and it, it's, it's a very high-end show, which I'm very proud of. Some of the people that helped me put it together is uh, was Alice Cutler, who was uh, a, a co-writer of, of the show, and she also plays Kelly, uh, one of the main uh, actors in the show, and uh, Jonathan Zwieben, who's uh, an independent film producer too, helped me out a lot. Even if you love independent movies, you know, I consider myself an independent producer, which means, you know, you, 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 you try to scrape up money to put something together. But no matter what I do, it has to get better when it comes to production value and the people. You know, you want to have a proper production. You want to have a proper production that runs smoothly. You don't want to have people getting arrested you know, and taken away on set cops showing up. And as an independent producer, you, you have to kind of do it that way where you're, you're guerrilla shooting scenes where you can't be. And you're always watching it for cops and, you know, stuff like that. So my advice is that, you know, really have a, a nice budget, really surround yourself with people who know their craft, who know what they're doing, so they can help you make the production the best it possibly can and to go uh, smooth. It th doesn't mean the show will be the, the, you know, the best, it doesn't mean the content will be the best, but as somebody who's trying to move up uh, their way in, in the chain of Hollywood or indie wor world, you know, your, your content and your reel, you know, speaks of who you are and what you can do. And uh, I think the more somebody does, the better their, their material has to be. Until, I really believe that until people are comfortable sitting on their couch and watching web on the TV, mm -hmm. uh, where, I mean, it's coming soon, eventually. We're not there yet, people are still sitting on the computers and it's, TV is still TV. Mm -hmm. And until people are really comfortable with, have, have the ability to watch internet stuff just pop up on their couch, the web is still gonna be the, the medium point, be under television, you know. I think marketing wise, I think, you know, people creating more content, distributors signing deals with, web portal distributors signing deals with these small cable networks that are out there right now, for the content, it could have that smooth transition where people can actually watch web television on their television. Years ago, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, I mean, people were shooting 20 minute, 15 minute short films uh, as they're calling card in Hollywood to show what they can do. These days, people are more interested in, you know, doing three minute, three episode, five minute uh, kind of web series. Uh, to and then pitch it to network sort of to show what a show is, whether it's for the web, if you want to invest in that, or mostly as, as pilots for, for television. I was talking to a few distributors before we even finished the show, sort of pitched them the idea, and back then, it was 2008, 2009, they were kind of starting out also, and they said, yeah, we'll take the show, you know, because, you know, they just wanted content on their sites. Uh, and after we finished the show, we kind of just gave it to them. I was signing uh, non-exclusive deals uh, with as many web portals uh, as I possibly could find. And most of the deals that we sign are non-exclusive uh, deals uh, where, you know, nobody really pays you up front. Everybody has uh, kind of uh, an ad revenue uh, share program where, you know, views and then they have a formula to CPUs or whatever, however it, it works out for them. Some of them are different, what they, well, because you don't, you don't really know what the advertisers pay them and what their deals, you don't really know. So whatever they tell you, it just kind of, 
you have to, you know, you have to listen to them. Yeah, I'll take it. And at that point, I wasn't expecting to make money of the show. I was just, you know, I just wanted to get my, my work seen. And, you know, that's how uh, I did it back then. I'm still doing it right now, signing as many deals as I possibly can for the show. And I'm, I'm hoping, uh, you know, also maybe sign a few phone deals for when, for, for the show. You know, I'm also pitching to a few digital cable networks uh, when it comes to, you know, just distribution. Uh, small marketing uh, wise was, you know, you got to set up as many accounts on as many media <laughs> things as you possibly can with your post or your trailer, uh, synopsis, I mean, Twittering, whatever you do, uh, screenings, showcases in LA, film festivals, uh, stuff like that you can do. Another weird thing uh, I did when it comes to grassroots, it's uh, there's some of these sites like Chat Roulette mm -hmm. uh, and many others like that where it's just, uh, for people who don't know that it just, you know, you, you randomly speak to people right. who you don't know all over the world <laughs> and it goes back and forth through your laptop, through the camera. And I found a way to hook up a trailer instead of Instead of, instead of the, watching you th yourself through the computer or talking to them, just a trailer plays. And you just rotate the switches from next person, next person, next person. And that was a weird just yeah. thing that I, I was able to manage to do, just think out of the box right, exactly. when it comes to marketing. And all this advice is for people who don't have real money to promote. I mean, if you have money to promote it, <laughs> if you have a studio backing your production company yeah. backing you, you know, you can get things seen, but if you don't, you have to find creative and really grassroots methods to get your work out there. Positive experience, uh, learning uh, what the web has to offer, uh, where, you know, it's going to be eventually, you know, d down the road, kind of being in, in the beginning process of seeing something grow, because, you know, in 20, 30, 40 years from now, you can say, I was there when this was just starting out, you know, um, Meeting the people that I met, the crews that I met, that I've worked with, which did a great job for me, uh, especially when you're paying them very little, little or not paying them at all, and the actors that you become friends with and you use for future projects. So there's a lot of positive things uh, that happen from, from saving rent, and especially of how the show turned out. Mm -hmm. You know, if the show didn't turn well, you can just say, okay, whatever, just okay. next one. But I'm, I'm, I'm very lucky that the show turned out the way it did because I wasn't expecting to turn out that well, but it did and I'm, and I'm very proud of that. Future projects, I have uh, two more short films uh, that I'm uh, pre-producing right, right now that I want to sort of get out of the way and uh, and I'm, one is more of like an erotic thriller type and uh, the shorts I'm doing is for the purpose that I just feel that uh, I have three short films now. I produced an indie feature, I produced a web series, I just feel like five short films would be that would be good for me. And uh, after that, I'm just gonna concentrate on developing feature film projects. Okay, okay. All right, well, thank you so much for taking this time and, and speaking with us today, it's a pleasure. Thank you, James. What I'd like to highlight from our interview today with Gary is when he brought up the point about using a web series as a calling card. Now, in the old days, Film students or you know new filmmakers would create a short film and use that as their calling card. They'd go to festivals or they may try to shop that around Hollywood to get some recognition or to get in those important meetings. But now we can do that with a web series. And what he pointed out, which I want to stress, is that if you're planning to use this web series as a calling card, you need to spend time in the pre-production, getting everything together, so that when you do show it to someone, they will know that you know how to pull everything together, the crew, the talent, the script, and make something that's impressive, that can get someone's attention if this is your calling card. I'm James Tucker, and you've been watching The Web Series Show. You can watch the full uncut episode on our website, thewebseriesshow.com.